So Ready or Not is a horror film, uh, but a very, but a, a, a kind of like a, a social commentary horror film. Like, it's actually trying uh, to say something, and it says it quite loudly that it's not going to be missed by anyone here. It, it boasts pretty clearly what this film is supposed to be about, that it's supposed to be about, you know, targeting the rich, targeting traditionalists, and just and making its point clear about how this kind of system is flawed. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it, it's, it has this great bold nature to it, where it, uh, it it knows what it's trying to say, it knows what it, what it wants to be, and it has a lot of giddy and gory fun trying to get there. Uh, so the premise is that there's a there's this family called the the Les Dumas. Um, they're 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 a very uh, wealthy wealthy family. Uh, they've had a history of of great riches, and that's because their ancestors um, became very very successful with selling games. Um, and they've and they've kind of like built up this empire where they have this this beautiful mansion and everyone's all wealthy and stuffy and a little bit elitist, um, a little bit well actually <laughs> quite a bit elitist. Um, but uh, we we come to the mansion on the time when uh, one of the sons, um, Alex, who's played by Mark O'Brien, is going to be marrying Grace, played by Samara Weaving. Now. Uh, Grace is a little bit nervous because, you know, she's entering into this rich family and uh, clearly there are some people who are not really digging her. They, they, they don't know if they want her there. Um, uh, Alex's, uh, Alex's father, uh, Tony, played by uh, Henry, uh, Henry Kzemi? <laughs> I'm trying to say his name right. Uh, he, he outright tells him, like, look, I don't think you should be marrying this girl. I think she's going to, you know, she's not not going to be good for this family. Um, others are kind of a little bit more ambivalent, uh, like uh, Adam Brody's character of Daniel, who plays Alex's brother, is kind of like, eh, whatever, you know, another woman in the family. And others are, don't even have to, like, say it. They just shoot daggers at them. Like, um, like Alex's aunt, um, Helen, who's played by uh, Nikki uh, Guadu... Uh, Nikki Guadney, I think her name is, uh, who looks like she's putting on like a like a witch outfit. She she doesn't even have to say anything. I mean, she does speak quite a bit, but she's very like you know like shooting daggers at Grace. Like I don't want you in the family. But in order to make her like officially in the family, uh, in order to have her accepted in, she has to play a game at midnight. So they have this little box um, that randomly pushes out cards, and whatever game comes out, you have to play it. Um, at uh, at midnight, and if it's not completed by the end of the night, then something bad will happen to the family. Like they'll lose their fortune, or they'll they'll all they'll all die. Uh, but essentially, they because their ancestors made this pact, this sort of like satanic pact, um, they have to play this game, otherwise everything will be ruined. Now it, it it seems fairly innocent because like I mean a lot of the games are kind of like old maid and stuff like that. But if you draw the card for hide and seek. It essentially means you're 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 they play hide and seek, but you're hunted down with weapons, and once you're found, they they don't kill you, but they do they do wound you pretty bad, and they have to bring you to this little uh, ceremony. Now it's great because they can't tell Grace this. Grace doesn't know any of this until the game is already on, and then once it is on, she's trying to escape, while some characters decide whether to help her, and others decide you know that you know. It, this is what we got to do, you know. If we want to maintain our wealth um, and our lives, we have to kill this woman uh, because that's that, that that's the nature of the game. That's that's how this goes about. Um, and then it essentially just turns into a giddy gore fest. Um, and and it's it's a dark comedy in the sense that this family they've become accustomed to killing, but they're not good at it. They're not good at it at all. Like they know that this has to be done, but they take this weird type of fascination in it when it's kind of meant to be the normal except they keep contorting it and it's pretty clear like you know it becomes more clear as the film goes on that this film is meant to try to be like anti-capitalist but the more it goes on it becomes more evident and more vocal about what it's trying to say like at one point uh tony is all about trying to maintain this tradition by saying that oh we need to use classic weapons like like axes and crossbows and rifles and stuff like that um but then they decide like well you know you know, my, you know, our ancestors didn't know about security cameras, so maybe we could use security cameras to, you know, to cheat. And at one point, Ellen says, like, you know, pick and choose, pick and choose. <laughs> and, th and that's really what this is. It's kind of like pick and choosing and, you know, trying to rationalize this tradition 
um, of killing someone who's not within like the wealth of the family in order to justify keeping this this lineage going. Um, and it, it becomes pretty clear what it is, especially the more irritated that Grace becomes, because eventually Grace catches on. Grace, you know, gains some, you know, some some power and some grit and decides that I'm going to try to fight back. And wow, does she get bloodied and wounded and maimed through this and just keeps fighting on and on and on. Um, and she and she does it all in her wedding dress. <laughs> Which is really cool when you think about it. I mean, she she's in a very she's in a bloodied wedding dress. She gets beaten to like a pulp. Uh, she's wearing a, like dirty sneakers. She's got a rifle on and she's got ammo. Even she's got to like stop in the mirror and look at herself and go like, God damn, this is <laughs> this is pretty badass. Um, now I th like in terms of like the violence here, it's very over the top gore and violence. Like people get. Uh, shot in the face, they get their their skulls crushed in, they get nails through their their hands. One character, like, and, and it's all fairly darkly comedic because at one point someone gets shot in the mouth with a crossbow, and they they think they're dead except they keep gurgling over dialogue. So it's it's very darkly comedic in that aspect. Um, one of the other kills that's ridiculously absurd is one of the the maids gets killed in a um in a dumb waiter. And the thing is, like, whenever the maids get killed, like, the family just kind of, like, shrugs it off. They're just like, oh, I, I liked her, you know, I didn't really feel anything for her. But then once the family starts getting murdered, then they start actually getting a little bit more emotional and then a little bit more concerning. Because they realize that their lives are at stake here. Now, what I love about this film is that um, we tr we get to know enough about, like, the family. Like, like one of them is kind of like, you know, you know, like a passive-aggressive type woman. Another of them uh, is a little bit of a coke fiend. Another one is, like, kind of like a... a bumbling tubby guy and they all like that kind of this stuffy air of sophistication to them um and we get to understand a little bit about why they're doing what they have to do to grace but then we the more that we learn about them the more that you know we get to see them as villains and want to see them fall in the story because at one point there's a perfect scene in this film uh, where, uh, where, where a mother in the group is basically saying you know we, we have to kill grace and at one point uh daniel uh, Anna Brody's character talks back and says, you know what? Everything we've done is so disgusting because, you know, we this isn't the first time we've killed. We've killed before just to keep the fam family line going uh, that w we should probably deserve to die for all this. And at, and at one point, the woman says like, well, well, my kids don't deserve to die for this. And you kind of understand that, you know, as, as a parent, you know, you, you want to do what's best for your kids. But in that same scene, um, and this kind of plays into a little bit more of the tongue-in-cheek cheek uh, tongue-in-cheek nature is that in that same scene uh, she finds her boy and congratulates him for trying to shoot at Grace uh, because he says and I quote that's what everyone else was doing and so Daniel just kind of looks looks on at this and like eh, maybe your kids do deserve to suffer it's just gonna mean they're gonna keep killing more people and keep this this brutal lineage going um, it, it gets very ridiculously absurd, too. Like, yes, its message is very heavy-handed. It does force itself really hard. But, I mean, maybe it's maybe they hope that you'll, you'll miss the points. Like, there's no missing the point here. It's pretty obvious what this film is trying to say. Um, the gore is brilliantly over the top. It's got kind of this Evil Dead vibe where, you know, a character will have to, you know, literally you know, in order to survive, have to do something really horrible. Like, at one point, in order to get out of a gate, Grace willingly lets herself get cut by the gate pretty deep. At one point, to get out of a hole, she ends up slamming her hand on a nail trying to get out there. It, it is pretty damn gruesome. Um, but uh, And it also gets pretty damn brutal. Like, I love the fact that this family seems sophisticated and, uh, and you know, like, like wealthy and adult. And yet, once they start losing, then they start just, just shouting vulgarities and screaming at each other and just going nuts the whole time. Um, it is, <laughs> and it is such a trip. Especially once we get to the third act. Like, by the time we got to the third act, I'm like, okay... I get it. I know what this film's trying to say. It's saying it. It's saying it pretty loudly, but it's like, okay, we're just kind of like getting to the end here. We we can kind of see what's coming here, and then they throw just a little bit of a twist in the end there that kind of catches you off guard. Um, that that it's actually pretty brilliant. It's it it goes that that little extra mile of absurdity that I wanted towards the end there, um, to really be a fun picture, uh, very fun picture. Um, it's very, like I said, it, it's very heavy-handed. It wears its message on its sleeve, like, pretty firmly. Um, the cast is amazing here. I think, uh, uh, Samara Weaving is astounding as this sort of, uh, 
as a sort of woman warrior, especially since she essentially turns into like a brute by the end. I mean, she's covered in blood. She, her eyes are bugging out. She is vicious. She's angry. She's just like grunting at people, just holding a knife saying, get the hell back, all of you. Um, that's amazing to see. It's also interesting to see how the, the characters and their, motivation, uh, their motivations shift over the course of this film. Like some characters will become more committed to the ceremony and others will not based on, you know, their own preference because, you know, they're, you know, they're not really a hive collective in, in the grand scheme of things. You know, they all have different ideas and personalities and stuff they want to do. Um, but, but because they're locked in, in the, the Les Dumas structure, um, they can't, really escape that that mind that they're in you know they're, they're pretty much bound by this um so yeah the, <laughs> it's astounding too when you think about it because like you know this comes out on the heels of them taking out the film uh the hunt which was about um which was a dystopian film about uh, um uh conservatives like essentially conservatives being hunted down by the liberal elite this film is literally the exact opposite of that and makes its point very clear <laughs> Now, you're wondering how, like, you know, uh, you know, th this film didn't get come under more scrutiny. But I get the feeling once it once it's out there, a lot of people are going to take note of this film. Um, it is it is a lot of fun. Um, yes, it it is very heavy handed social commentary. Like it's, uh, you know, it's it, it's it's kind of akin to like stuff like something that Jordan Peele might do, except you know a little bit more blunt and brutal, which I like. Like there's no hiding behind it. There, there's barely any subtext of what's going on here. Uh, you can read it pretty clearly. That um, that I I kind of love that boldness. It, it was it was refreshing. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun. I <laughs> I had quite a bit of fun at this film. Like especially since you know once especially this kind of like a one two punch with like the gore and the violence because in you know one scene with like you know a maid would be killed to be a maid would be killed pretty violently and gory. Um, uh, like you know the initial shock of the gore is hilarious and then. Like, it's kind of like that, ooh, that uneasy hilarity. And then once the family reacts, like, like oh, well, I, I kind of liked her. Then you kind of, well, you uneasy, uneasily laugh a little bit more. But uh, but it's uh, but it's it's pretty fun for, for how darkly comedic it is. Um, th this is a real treat of a horror film. So, for Ready or Not, four out of five stars.